Hi guys, welcome back to the Butterfly Effect podcast. Today we are going to be doing an FMV review. Jack and I recently played the shape-shifting detective and this video is all about just us saying whether we liked it, the parts we disliked, everything in between. So Jack, uh, uh, firstly, are, are you glad that we played the game? Absolutely. After getting over the hurdle, those that have seen the streams will know about this, after getting over the hurdle of, uh, you know, late shift not really working out because of the shitty audio, I'm actually really glad um, because it, was t it wasn't what I expected. I thought that this was going to be a classic movie. You, it's all hour and a half, two hours, you make some choices, you do a bit of shape shifting, you do a bit of detecting, you solve a mystery. But it actually wasn't that. Like, this was like... Uh, I mean, uh, so looking at th things online, this could be like a six-hour game. And it pretty much was for us, wasn't it? And you're just dancing between all these different characters, interviewing them, but you can also shape-shift into them to then get different sort of lines of dialogue and different bits of the story through pretending to be someone else. So in terms of the concept, I really, really liked it going into it. What about you? I agree, the concept's fascinating, the fact that we're a detective and then we can shapeshift as another suspect, go in around this hotel, speak to another suspect, divulge information, but then later on, like, when you shapeshift as another person or maybe back into yourself as the detective, that, like, you can't share that information because it's like, they're gonna suspect, like, I didn't tell you that, how did you find out about that? So, like, you almost have to remember what you said as who and to who. And it kind of like, it creates this really interesting dynamic that I don't think would work as a movie or a series. I think like this is like an FMV specific concept. And I think it nails it down to the most part. There are flaws in this game, but yeah, like I, I certainly was intrigued, mate. We obviously, we get a wide range of characters, don't we, mate? Like, are there any that were your favorites? Any that you thought smashed it out of the park in terms of acting? Yeah, I think so. I think, um... The, you know, the tarot reader, I forgot, it was Br oh, Bronwyn, that's it, that's the name, Bronwyn. I really liked Bronwyn, just like the concept of a tarot reader, I quite liked how that strand fitted into the plot. The fact that she seemed quite integral, and the fact that she even got arrested and was missing at some point in the plot, it felt like that a major character was missing. But yeah, like, coming back to the plot, like, the fact that, sort of, she predicted the death of Dero to Shaw originally and then of course there did actually later on predict another death as well um I did like the cop very quirky you know it felt like he wasn't sort of a I don't know he, he was very personable wasn't he the cop like he wasn't sort of like a rules very stiff upper lip sort of like by the book by the book cop he seemed to be a little bit more casual and a little bit more playful um I quite like Violet as well, just like the way, I think it's like the actress, I can't remember the name now, Death is in the name for some reason, I can't remember that. Uh, but yeah, that the way she acted, the way she sort of held herself, again, giving off this sort of very upper class lady, you know, that runs this hotel. But again, actually, as the game goes on and you start to see the vulnerabilities of Violet, um, like with like the sort of the mental health stuff, the relationships, with the certain characters like the cop for example and zach in particular you start to sort of see like different dynamics of violet and i thought that actually the actress put it across really well mate but what about you yeah i think the three you named same here really like you know violet chief dupont um i think you know hats off to rain as well because like um we'll talk about like the mystery and the possible killers in the end but we had a version of the game where it wasn't rain was it and we were unsure no. if we picked the right one and then we had a scene with rain at the end where he went boo and he was like kind of being really creepy and we thought oh god he's gonna kill us and i i felt like r the actor for rain um a guy called nicholas popel popel maybe um i think he he smashed it out of the park but yeah i think um apparently aislin the af or but yeah really cool name has death in her like surname that's sick uh, i think she smashes it as well and yeah the dupon really memorable um i think I, hated the character in Zack, but I feel like if someone's playing a bad guy and they manage to make you hate him, I think it means that they smash it out the park as well. So I probably have to give like, you know, tip my hat to that guy as well. Um, yeah, and like you say, Bronwyn, really good. Um, 
I, I do think the actress for Lexi, or, or maybe that was the style she was going for, the ditzy person, the kind of lesser of the three sort of like readers. I, I did think her acting at times was questionable, but maybe that was just the character she was going for. I'm not kind of like a master at people's acting ability, so I can't really comment on that one. But yeah, no, like a really good wide range of characters. I do think like maybe it suffers somewhat with the fact that you get different chapters and then certain characters start to trickle in. And I think for some of them, they come in too late. Like you get Poe, I think, or like, um, no, what are the radio guys called, mate? Poe and... Uh, it's Poe and Monroe, isn't it? Poe and Monroe, yeah. So one half of Poe and Monroe will come at the very last chapter and you barely get any scenes with them. So like, you know, it, it just felt like a little bit of just attack on. But otherwise, yes, it's some some really memorable characters. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the mystery, mate. So like, obviously, you're trying to find out who killed this person. You go around the room. I'm not going to lie, mate. I was a little disappointed when you told me, and am I right in thinking this, that there are only three outcomes to this, you know, like, game? There is. I was going to ask you that, actually, because, yeah, there are only three killers. Um, I mean... I'm going to say a spoiler now, so if you, for whatever reason, not played this game, then maybe just ignore the next 30 seconds or whatever. Um, so yeah, the, the three killers being Zack, which is who we got in our playthrough, which is a little, Chris, I, I, it, it was a little bit on the nose. Like, I was thinking, like, it can't be that guy. That, that's why I was picking Rain so much, because Zack was just a... Rain was a creep, but Zack was like an ultra creep. Like, it, almost every single line delivery, that guy just like, wanted to freak you out. Um, Rain was obviously the other killer. Um, interestingly enough, if Rain is the killer because the killer does auto-generate with each gameplay, it is actually possible that Sam dies and Rain kills you, whereas if the killer is Zack or you know the other killer being Violet, um, they can't actually kill you. Um, what happens is, if you've not seen this, you shapeshift into someone they recognise. So I think for Violet, you just shapeshift into Zack. And I can't remember. She is it, it, it was the same for Zack as well. I think you become Violet or you become Zack. Like, so he sees himself. And uh, then they ultimately just like either fall on the floor, like pass out, or like one of them can die as well. So, yeah, only three killers. And I've got to admit, I do share your sentiment because... I thought that there was more than three. So I was even at one point, I was like thinking about Chief DuPont because we had that whole strand, didn't we? With like him and Violet hinded a dead body. And I was like, oh, like, could, you know, could it be the Chief, you know? Could it be the cop? No, for sure. And to be honest, I, I really want to see the other gameplays we, you know, you can get where Violet or Rain is the killer because we had the version with Zach. And don't, I, don't get me wrong, I, I feel really rewarded that we got it right. One criticism I would have, though, is that in our version, when it was Zack, I wanted like someone to say something that made me have to think and really dig and feel really rewarded for getting it. But I never really suspected Zack. And then there's a point where we you know, shapeshifted into Violet and we just randomly said, oh, I followed you to the victim's house. And then he didn't deny it. And it almost felt like it negated all the other points and clues because it was almost just spelled out to us like in one scene, in one bit of dialogue. And I don't know, I just feel like I would have liked to have got it with a more rewarding way where I deducted a clue where, like, the only other thing I can really say is that maybe the amethyst was on, like, the girl's neck. I don't know if that is actually intended. I was looking out for this gold coin or this, like, velvet pouch or whatever, but there wasn't really any of that. It just was very much like a random accusation and then him not denying it. I don't know if you share that sentiment as well, lad. I get your point, and another thing as well, I think because Zack was a character that was introduced later, um, that sort of had less of an impact on me. I would have perhaps preferred it if it was Violet or Rain. Um, just because we, we said this during the stream, didn't we? We said that there was like several, you know, red herrings, you could say. You had the storyline with like the tarot readers and the Jed Traveller angle. And the fact that though they can come back through time and inhibit someone's body and we was talking about it and even people in the stream were suggesting oh maybe someone become possessed you know and you know that is partly what i think happens with rain because if rain is the killer he's like possessed by somebody else some like russian or there was something that was alluded to like slightly earlier in the game 
Um, but yeah, like Zach's one, it's just sort of like, oh, you know, he just doesn't like getting rejected by women. So it's like, you've gone through all these hours, all these different strands, and I feel like it could have been a little bit more clever. It could have been a little bit more interwoven. So yeah, I, I do get you, mate. No, for sure. And while we're kind of talking about, a, you know, a slight negative here, um, the, the game isn't perfect, you know, like maybe you could talk about the style, about how the camera just slowly goes around the hotel, maybe you like that. But the main one that we mentioned is just the fact that a big part of the game, right, is about exhausting options, right? So you're shapeshifter someone and you just have to go through all these hotel rooms and just get through all the dialogues, basically. But as a result of this, you will go into someone's room and then when, you know, like either they're not there or you can say hi and then buy like in those video games where you've exhausted all the options but they'll still leave high and buy in and we were kind of under the impression that like there easily could have been an option where if there was nothing to add that maybe like the hotel room or that character should have been greyed out that way it could save you a lot of time because i don't know if, if they do that then we probably save about an hour or a half of like gameplay right and i just felt like that was a little frustrating that we spent ages and especially the fact as well mate we were doing it on stream and our poor just like fans had to sit and watch all of that for a while right yeah that was what i was most conscious of because obviously i was the one playing it right i was the one moving between and obviously chatting to the guys in the chat what should we do next this and that even me is like playing it it was becoming tedious i was sat there thinking like god like god knows what like these guys are thinking and it was all right at first because you know it's a new game it's a mystery you sort of, but as time goes on you do sort of think oh yeah like this is getting a little bit annoying now especially if you have to you know chat to the same person but you let's just say for example you have to visit like i don't know chief dupont and you always have to get the cab to go to him right now you find out a bit of information from dupont but you now want to go back to him as someone else so you've then got to get the cab back to the guest house go to your room change into somebody else then leave then get in the car then go back to dupont it's a little bit of a faff and like don't get me wrong the movement between each screen was quick it's not like it buffered it's not like it was difficult in any way it moved seamlessly but coming back to the point yeah it does start to grain, grain on you over a period of time, especially when you're getting into sort of like the, the three, four hour mark is what I'd say. That's the thing. We said the real winners of the game is the taxi drivers. <laughs> the amount of taxi fares you yeah. spend on is nuts. That that taxi driver was a happy bunny that night. He made a fuck ton of money that like <laughs> he's probably never leaving August because that guy's a millionaire. You know what? I will add one other negative as well. And... For me, I've not actually experienced this yet, but I have seen this online. And it's basically for those that want to get the 100% on this game. So a lot of the time you'll be able to do it all in one playthrough. However, the issue is when you finish the game, and the good thing is that you can skip certain scenes, but the good, the bad thing is that you can't choose who the killer's going to be. So it will always auto-generate. So let's just say like one of the achievements is to get Sam killed, I believe, which means you have to have rain. You have to have like the rain playthrough, right? And do you know what I mean? You could like start the game, play the first 15, 20 minutes, and then you can almost establish because of like certain things that even we don't know about, mate, that who the killer's gonna be. And you could go through that, quit, restart, play the 15 minutes again, and it might not be rain. It doesn't work on a circuit. You can you can't also pick who the killer's gonna be either. So for those maybe getting the hundred percent, it's sort of like a trial and error. Just keep going, keep going until you land on a situation where you do ultimately have rain be the uh, be the killer. Obviously, a minor point. Not everyone goes into these for a hundred percent, but just for those out there that do want to do it, just keep that in mind. And another thing I want to mention, and this isn't a criticism, maybe it is, I just found it kind of funny, maybe like that isn't what they were trying to achieve though, is that when you interview someone and it kind of goes between scenes, you kind of like would just get like a little slow-mo cut of them from a weird random camera angle where they're doing something. And the most notable one for me is Chief Dupont putting a hat on 
and then it like goes back to him, you talking to him and then he's not wearing a hat and it's like did you just <laughs> it's just the thought of you trying to talk to someone and then midway through conversation they put a hat on and then put it down again and then with violet randomly you're trying to have a serious conversation about like death and mental health and then she's just like sexually unbuttoning her top and it's like <laughs> violet what are you doing mate uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, i don't know what you made of those lad <laughs> I oh, know it's true. It, it is funny, isn't it? I mean, it's like she was doing, starting to do like a little strip tease for you, and then the next thing you know, she's saying, "Oh, I didn't get abducted by aliens," and it's like, what? <laughs> it just just completely doesn't add up at all. But yeah, like obviously that's like a that's like a relatively minor thing. But I think overall, though, what I would say is that actually it was an enjoyable experience. It does have replay value. It does have branching as well because. Bronwyn, as it happened in our one, Bronwyn can get arrested. Um, that isn't always the case. Obviously, we know that there's different killers as well. Um, so yeah, like it was a fun. It was fun, honestly. It wasn't what I expected when I went into it, and I think that's what threw me for a little while. Um, but I don't know about you, mate. I'd I'd recommend it. You know, if you got like a spare tenner or whatever, and you want to sort of play like an FMV game, something a bit different where you make choices and you've got a mystery to solve. Yeah, I'd recommend The Shapeshifting Detective 100%. Yeah, I would as well, because FMV really isn't our wheelhouse. We're kind of new to it. The only other kind of real experience we have from it is Erica. And although Erica probably has like the more mainstay actors in it and I don't know, maybe like a bigger budget and stuff and it's more cinematic. I, I do think I actually prefer the shapeshifting detective. I know they're very different. Erica kind of is more of a story you get from A to B. This one, but like the concept is just an absolute slam dunk for me. And like you say, there's replay value in this one when there probably isn't with Erica to an extent. There are like a few different endings there. But I feel like with this one, you know, you load it up, like you say, you get a random different killer and that's just great. I, I think, you know, that is really good. And I think, um, for FMVs to really work, you need the actors to smash it out of the park, and in my opinion, they really do. So, um, yeah, no, honestly, uh, I also really recommend Shapeshifting Detective. I thought it was a really enjoyable experience. But guys, that was our review for the Shapeshifting Detective. Quite positive, honestly. Uh, for those that really like FMV as well and want to join our streams, uh, I would, you know, keep an eye out um, at our channel because we do monthly streams to play FMV games on Twitch with Jack. And also keep an eye out for our polls because we actually give you guys the power to pick which ones you want to play next. So keep an eye out on those guys. And we will be doing a lot more uncovering of these FMV games, playing them and reviewing them. And possibly more if you guys are interested in that. Thank you very much for joining guys. We will see you in the next one. Catch you later.